And now, ladies and gentlemen, the author of How Capitalism Will Save Us to discuss with Harris Rosen how capitalism today is saving us, uh, Steve Forbes. Well, thank you very much, Marty, and thank all of you, and thank you, Harris, for uh, coming here to share uh, what should be someday conventional wisdom instead of superior wisdom. And that's the wonderful thing about free markets. It takes things that are rare and makes them uh, a commonplace if they're allowed to work. And if you look around this country, what are the two most troubled areas? Education and health care. Where is the government most involved? Education and health care. Ask yourself, why do we have a health care crisis in this country? It's not the overall quality of health care, medical care in this country. Overall, it's the best in the world by far. Uh, we have the greatest longevity in the world by far when you look at the real numbers, not the fake ones the state has put out there or the doctored ones, you might say. The, and the answer, conventional answer is, well, uh, we have a health care crisis, medical care crisis, because people like me, baby boomers, are getting older. We want more medical care. Uh, prices keep going up and the system goes kablooing and becomes unaffordable. Well, there we have to ask ourselves a very basic question. Why is demand for health care considered a crisis, a growing demand, whereas demand for more uh, anything else in the economy is considered a huge, uh, a huge benefit. If people want more apps, writers will be glad to help you out. People want uh, more hotel facilities, Harris and others will be glad to help you out. People want more cars, manufacturers, Detroit and elsewhere, glad to help you out. So why is health care demand seen as a disaster instead of a great opportunity? And the basic answer is we don't have real free markets in health care. It's all third party. The patient is not the customer. And when that happens, you get crazy things. And because we've grown up with this system, we don't realize how weird it is. You go to a doctor, clinic, or hospital, and you ask in advance what it costs, you're going to get a very strange look. It means one of two things. Either you're uninsured or you're a lunatic. I mean, why would you want to know the price? What's it to you? Now, can you imagine going to lunch today, ordering a fancy bottle of wine, and saying, I don't care what it costs, let Blue Shield or Medicare sort the thing out. You know, it, 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 uh, so, 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 so the system goes haywire. And you take something even more basic than health care, which is food. No food, no nothing. If government took over agriculture because some people had problems getting food, we'd have no more obesity. We'd all be starving. Uh, they tried it in Russia and China. It did not work very well. So even though you have government involvement, uh, agriculture is still pretty much allowed to produce the food. Private companies process the food. Truckers and others deliver the food. Grocery stores, hotels, convenience stores, supermarkets, everyone sells the food. People have problems. You have everything from food stamps to food banks to deal with it. Why in the world can't we get the same thing in health care, allow true entrepreneurship, have effective safety nets instead of the hodgepodge system today? And uh, we'll turn what looks like a hopeless liability into the greatest growth industry ever because health care is the most personal thing ever. And, 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 you, and you see beginnings of it. For example, flu shots. Once upon a time, if you wanted a flu shot, you had to make an appointment with a doctor, go to the office, get the flu shot. Now, you get them everywhere. You go to the gas station, say, fill her up and give, give me a flu shot, do the windshield. <laughs> and and, and you, you, you see it with the rise of walk-in clinics and CVS and elsewhere. And uh, Walmart would do it if the uh, regulators allowed them. So with government involvement, the delivery of health care has been ossified. It's sort of one size fits all instead of entrepreneurs figuring out how to do it better. And we're on the cusp of fantastic breakthroughs in medicine. From medical devices, just the other day, saw one no bigger than a cell phone. Put your fingers under it. Lines go up and down doing your EKG. Tell you in a matter of seconds, you're OK or you got a problem. And that kind of technology is coming more and more. We had a cover story on Novartis and great breakthroughs coming in on cancer. And so free markets, if allowed to work, always turn scarcity into abundance. I mentioned cell phones. You look at the cell phone 30 years ago, big as a shoebox, 30-minute uh, you know, battery life, cost $3,995. Today, there are 7.5 billion around the world, almost giveaways, depending on what the uh, Verizon or AT&T program or T-Mobile program you might have. And if I guarantee if 30 years ago the government gotten involved, there'd been a Barack Obama back then saying everyone's going to have access to, uh, or Val Gore, have access to uh, cell phones. Today, they'd still be as big as a shoebox, cost $9,995, and they'd be uh, pillaring and criticizing the greedy cell phone makers. 
So, so the key thing is, in this whole health care debate, is how in the world do we get the patient in charge again? And there are multitudinous ways to do it. There's no one size fits all. And I guarantee you, as we break these barriers down, and we will, well, a new system is a borning, not what we had before, not what we have, well, we're not this single payer system they're trying to foist on us today. But the key thing is, as I mentioned earlier, just don't get sick for the next three or four years until we sort this thing out, unless you work for Harris. Right. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, the key thing is have the patient in charge, have the patient the real customer, and you'll get the miracle of free markets, which is turning scarcity into abundance, not allocating resources, but creating resources in ways people couldn't have imagined before. It's very basic. And don't say health care is different. Every industry, every service is different, starting with food. And, uh, but free market principles can work. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Harris, we're going to have another 50 minutes, five zero minutes uh, in a little while to go over more details. But uh, the free market aspects of Rosen Care, of course, critically important because it couldn't be done without the free market. Tell us what the key elements of Rosen Care are that make it less expensive and better for your employees. Yes, and, and let me let me say this that this is this is not an experiment. This is something we've been doing for twenty five years, and we've learned a lot in those twenty five years. The most important thing we've learned is that healthcare is not some mysterious thing that you need to be well-educated in necessarily, or you need to study uh, for long periods of time to know about. We learn a lot about healthcare by getting involved. Was it scary in the beginning? It sure was. Did people say that I was crazy? They absolutely did. But the first year that we had our little medical center up and we were creating this program, our healthcare costs declined from $2,700 per cap of recovered life to $750. Why? Because we focus laser-like on two things, wellness and prevention. That's not rocket science. If you take good care of yourself, if you take good care of your loved ones, if you provide them with all of the things that they need to stay healthy, they'll stay out of the hospital. Now, we do have hospitalists who work with us in the hospital. And as soon as our folks are ready to leave, they leave, and we do have our own home care division. We believe that a hospital is probably one of the worst places to be if you're sick. <laughs> and so we've created this entity we refer to as Rosen Care. And the benefits are absolutely extraordinary. Our associates, if you're single, you pay $750 a year for health care. There's no deductible. If you're in the hospital, you pay $1,500 maximum. We deduct that from your salary at $25 a week until you've paid that back. So it's $750 and then $1,500. If you have a family, it could be three, four, seven, nine, ten, fixed to $2,500 for the family per year coverage and $2,500 for hospital care. That's what you pay. I pay the balance. Interesting situation. We had a preemie born about two years ago. She weighed in a little over a pound and a half. She was in the hospital for six months. She's perfectly well now, about three years old. The bill, $1,200,000. What did mom and dad pay? They paid $500. And, 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 and people wonder, how can we afford to do something like that? Well, how can you not afford to take good care of your associates? We love them dearly. If I close my eyes and I dream about health care for the United States of America, I don't dream about Obamacare. 
I don't dream about you can keep your doctor, you can keep your health insurance. That's not.